everybody and welcome back to another Total Drama video. My name is Silly Billy, but you can call me Billy. Now, this will come as a shock to not a single one of you watching, but just in case you were in cryo sleep for the last year or so, Total Drama is coming back, baby! After being off the air since 2015, no, we don't talk about Dramarama, Total Drama is finally set to return to our screens with not one, but two new seasons. 16 new characters, the return of Chris and Chef, 26 episodes in total, this season is set to have it all. But when? Recently, people have started to wonder when we will finally hear something about the new seasons. Since their announcement in February of 2021, there has been little more than radio silence from the production team. So, in order to bridge the unbearable long gap between then and the still unknown release of the first season, I thought now would be the perfect time to talk about my hopes and expectations for this season. I have collected five of my biggest wishes for these new seasons, as well as five expectations I am nearly willing to bet money on we will see in this show. Note that these will not include the few details that we do already know from the new seasons. If you're curious to read up on those details for yourself, I will leave a link to a Reddit post by AceTD in the description. I'll go from my fifth highest wish to my number one wish for the season, as well as from my fifth biggest expectation to my most certain expectation. And additionally, I'll switch up between hopes and expectations each time, so the order becomes fifth expectation, fifth biggest wish, fourth expectation, etc, etc. Oh, and one final thingy, since I'll be talking a lot about stories that don't exist yet, I don't have a lot of relevant footage to show you yet, so I'll probably just play some gameplay in the background. Or maybe I'll be creative and give you some random images of cute kittens, who knows. Without further ado, I proudly present you my top 10 predictions for the new Total Drama seasons. Starting off with a bit of a sour one, but coming in as expectation number 5, I predict that the first new season won't air until 2023. I know we all can't wait for the first episode to drop, but unfortunately, I think it's going to be a while until we can enjoy Total Drama on our screens again. The simple reason why I think so is because it's just taking way too long until we finally get some news on the new seasons. Usually, the marketing for a project starts well in advance of the actual release in order to hype up the project some more and get us excited for the new seasons. I mean, take a look at the Redonkulous race, for example. Carrie and Devon were the first team to be released, which happened in January of 2015. The season itself would ultimately be released in September of that same year. That's nearly nine months in between the first teaser and the final release. Even in the most positive outcome where we would receive news about the new seasons right this instant, we would still be looking at a holiday release of being optimistic. However, the far more likely alternative is that the season will be pushed back to 2023. Granted, the Redonkulous race did have a lot more characters and episodes than these seasons will have, uh, plus the little promotional art we do already have shows a 2022 release. Regardless though, I still think it's safe to assume that we won't be seeing the new season anytime soon. On the number 5 for my hopes list, I uh, hope that this season is not too cringy. This may be a bit of a weird one to put on my hopes list, but let's face it, the original generation is no longer really the target audience for the new seasons. We have seen this with Dramarama as well, and while I think the majority of the active Total Drama community are still longtime veterans, I think they no longer make up a majority of the watch time for the show. Fresh TV has also kind of confirmed this, stating how the characters better reflect today's teens. This will most certainly lead to a generational gap compared to the people who were young when the original Total Drama season aired. And while I certainly have a lot of faith in the writers and producers, of this show, I can't help but die a little inside each time I read that the season will feature extreme TikToking. <laughs> Continuing on with my number four expectation, I think the animation quality of this season will be the best we have ever seen. Over the years, Total Drama's animation quality has steadily evolved as the animators have consistently been getting better and better at drawing the characters and their surroundings. Motions are more fluid, backgrounds are more vibrant, and characters' expressions are more expressive. Say what you want about Dramarama, but its art style looks crisp. Same goes for the Redonkulous race, which helps these characters come alive even more. Now, it's one thing to simply expect this trend to continue into the future, but the reason I bring specific attention to it is because show writer Terry McGurin has specifically pointed towards surprises in the animation department to look forward to. What those are, I honestly couldn't tell you, but I feel like just calling it out by itself already means that we are in for a treat when it comes to the visual department. Now, for the number four of our hopes list, and this is quite a controversial one, I hope that the old generations of characters do do not make a return as contestants. Yes, yes, I know. What? But hear me out on this one. 
it is confirmed that we will get a total of 16 new contestants across 26 episodes. At best, that would leave only a dozen or so characters to return from previous generations. And that is assuming that not a single character competes in both seasons. Which, let's face it, those new characters returning in both seasons is basically set in stone. Realistically, there's only a couple of characters that could return alongside the new cast. And the problem then becomes, who do you pick? From a cast of over 80 characters, how do you determine who deserves another season most? Will you go for season 1 veterans that have appeared multiple times already since they are the flagship of the show? We all know how that ended the last time they attempted something similar. Or will they pick some of the smaller characters who haven't gotten as much screen time yet? That will certainly make some fans happy, but it will also leave a bitter taste that some other fan favorites missed the boat for a new season again. Don't get me wrong, I would hope nothing more than a new season with the returning cast, but I don't think that these generations five seasons are the seasons to do so besides of course that they have already stated that they won't do it but it can still happen and hopefully the show becomes a massive success allowing for a second all-star season but for now i feel like the old cast would just take away from the new characters when put in their season for my number three expectation, we stick with the topic of old contestants for a little longer, as I expect that the new Total Drama seasons will feature cameos from the original Total Drama cast. While I talked earlier about how the original viewers are no longer the target demographic, Fresh TV is perfectly aware that there is still a large group of fans clamoring for more content and they are obviously wanting to appeal to that group too. And with the promise that this season will return to its roots, alongside the return of Chris and Chef Hatchet, I am almost certain of a surprise appearance of some of the old camp goers. It's just a very easy way to bait nostalgia. I mean, they did it with season 4 and then again for the Redonkulous race and even in Dramarama. And since they're even going as far as to bring back Camp Wawanaqua, which last time we saw it sunk to the bottom of the ocean, there's no way that they will pass up the opportunity to shoe in some original campers in this new season either. As a bonus prediction, I think all the cameos will be only Season 1 veterans. They will almost definitely bring back Owen, Duncan, Gwen and Heather in the season one way or another. I hope to see other generations of characters as well, but I feel they are less likely to happen. Coming in at my third biggest hope for this season, I really hope that Chris can be his normal self again. I think most people agree that host Chris McLean's character has derailed from being a chill and charming host to an outright sociopath who no longer cares about the contestants competing but only about the ways he can torture them. And I think the writers are aware of this too. They too have seen the reception to All Stars and Pakatu. And the fact that they are hammering on going back to the roots so much makes me think that they realize that people want to see a more relaxed Chris reminiscing of the older seasons. What also makes me hopeful is that they know perfectly well how to write an engaging, layback host, as they found the perfect mix with Dawn. All in all, I hope Chris's break from the big screen will do good for the character and that he won't spiral down his maniacal road even more with the next two seasons. Next up is my second biggest prediction, and actually I couldn't really decide which one I wanted to do more, so I made this a little two-in-one prediction about some of the characters' elimination placements. First off, I think we will see something similar to Mike's elimination in Revenge, where the winner of the second season will be eliminated just after the merge of the first season. The creators already know that there will be two seasons, and so they can spread out the development of certain characters over the full duration of both seasons, meaning that they can focus more on different characters in season one. However, I think they still want to develop this character to the extent that you'll be rooting for them once the second season starts. Hence their position just after the merge. It wouldn't make sense for the first boot of season 1 to be the winner of season 2, if you get what I'm saying. To make the Mike comparison even stronger, they could give the second season winner an unfair elimination too, which will make us root even more for them once the second season comes around. The second prediction I have concerning the elimination order is that one of the LGBTQ characters will make it to the finale. Even though we have still not seen any character designs yet, at least not at the time of making this video, I have a strong suspicion that one of the LGBTQ characters will end up taking home the win in one of the two alternative endings. The show writers have already confirmed that there will be two gay characters in the show and that they will be in a couple. Total Drama has always had relationships as a main focus of their character arcs, and it's quite often that one or sometimes even both of the romantic partners make it to the finale of a season. Additionally, I feel like they put way too much emphasis on the LGBT representation if it turned out that both characters ended up being early season boots. Finally, the Total Drama crew knows how much the audience likes shipping their characters, and as such, having one of them in the finale is an easy way to gain some sympathy for the winner. All in all, this leads me to believe that we need to keep a close watch on the LGBTQ characters in this season, as they may just end up winning it all. 
For my second biggest wish, we are sticking with the LGBTQ representation a little longer, as I really, really, really hope that they do the representation justice. Now, before I start out with the segment, I should note that I am just a straight white boy. I am not the one being targeted with diverse representation. So if you want to disregard everything I'm about to say, that is completely fine. However, I feel like diversity representation in media at the moment is not handled in the best way possible. Time and time again, I feel like representation is only done for the sake of representation, because a higher up in the production studio is trying to fill a certain quota, but doesn't really care how the final product is achieved. As a result, I often see gay characters or people of color whose only character arc or personality traits is about their acceptance in a society, or how they are constantly name dropping the thing that they're trying to represent. And I'm not saying that these stories aren't also important to tell, it's just that I feel like the more we are bringing attention to how okay it is to be LGBT, the further we split off LGBT as something special or unordinary and not just something normal. You know, Amy, anytime someone calls attention to the breaking of gender rules, it ultimately undermines the concept of gender equality by implying that this is an exception and not the status quo. I actually feel like Total Drama has already nailed down racial inclusion. Every single season up until this point has had black characters, and not once do they prove a statement about how awesome and inclusive they are, but rather they just make it normal. No super obvious messages being shoved in your face, just characters of all races and skin colors together, as it should. And I so wish that we can normalize this inclusion of two LGBTQ characters in a similar way. Not by making a big statement about how cool it is that these guys are gay, but simply a fun story with two characters who happen to be gay. And don't get me wrong, I completely get that despite LGBT acceptance getting bigger and bigger each year, it is still a good sight to see representation and inclusion of all types of people. And so of course the Total Drama team wants to show you how they have that inclusion people want to see. Which is super, by the way. I'm not surprised at all that inclusion and diversity is one of the first details we got to learn from these new seasons. I just really hope that they don't use it to stroke their own ego, like ha ha, look at us being woke, now buy our merch! But how they go beyond unnecessary attention seeking by subverting the Hollywood stereotypes of today and simply include them for who they are. Coming in as my biggest expectation for this new season, the seasons will probably not be up to the standard of previous seasons. I don't like having to put this as my biggest expectation for the season, but unfortunately we are once again given to 13 episode seasons. <sighs> For those of you who've seen my review series of all the seven seasons, you will know that I put Revenge, All Stars and Pocketu at the bottom of my ranking, which, not coincidentally, are the three seasons that have half the runtime of the other four seasons. Time and again, the 13 episode format has proven insufficient to tell a proper season with, and as a result, all of these three seasons felt rushed and didn't get a chance to breathe. And I think it's ridiculous that we are even sticking to 13 episodes at all, like why not 16 or 15? Why do they feel the need to do exactly half of a full length season. With a few more episodes under your belt, you can allow for a couple of non-elimination episodes, which give all the characters a chance for more development. But sadly, these seasons will both have only 13 episodes each, meaning that we will probably eliminate a contestant every single episode and get a lot more characters that get eliminated with only 2 or 3 episodes under their belt, to then never return to the show again. I would honestly have preferred just one season of 26 episodes with the 60 new characters that they already promised than to spread them out over 2 seasons of half the length each. Now, granted, we do already know that there will be two seasons, and as such, they can effectively spread the development for some characters equally over these two seasons. A majority of the Revenge cast also got two seasons, and they already feel like way more of a fleshed out character than those of Pocketu. And who knows, maybe I am dead wrong on this one, and we will get one of the most well-crafted cinematic experiences of all time. But unfortunately, I am afraid I will be right with this prediction. Which brings me to my biggest hope for the new seasons. I hope they will be good. Yes, Captain Obvious, you want the new stuff to be good, really? That's your biggest hope? Uh, yeah, absolutely. The reason why I specifically call attention to such a cliche and obvious hope is because of the Redonculus race. After All Stars and Pocketu varying from okay to just horrible, the Total Drama writers hit it out of the park with the Redonculus race, which in my opinion not only matched the level of quality of the original three seasons, but surpassed it, becoming my all-time favorite season. As such, the writers have completely restored my faith that they can write a good Total Drama season. Now the question becomes, which route will they take? Will they continue down 
down the absurdest spiral of Pocket to Island, or will they take what made the Redonculus race work and create two seasons that are at the very least on par with Revenge of the Island, another 13 episode season that expertly made use of the time it had to give us a great, if a little too short season. If I then have to choose between those two options, you can probably guess why I want this season to match the Redonculus race. Whatever the final product will be, I am absolutely ecstatic to get not one but two new seasons of my favorite show, and I cannot wait to watch season one when it is ultimately released in 2023. But what do you think? What are your predictions and hopes for the new season? Leave them down in the comments and we can have a fun discussion about them. But for now, that's going to be it for me. I've basically given a shout out to every single Total Drama video I've made up until this point, so the only other direction I can point you in is my Minecraft story Tales of the Farlands, where your suggestion ends up changing the plot entirely each episode. Check it out if you're interested, even if you're not that into Minecraft. I promise you, it's great. Once again, I thank you for watching. This has been Silly Billy, and remember that inclusion is the status quo, not the exception. Out of